Hi, this is Shadi and today I want to discuss a very important event that in my opinion caused somewhat of a paradigm shift. The world of martial arts changed forever in my opinion after that event. Um, this is the August 5th, 1879 incident uh, and I'm going to talk about all the things that led up to it and after it. Um, so a lot of people like to say that 1993 is when the world of martial arts changed forever and in my opinion this does not make much sense for both judo's sake and bjj's sake for judo judo has been an olympic sport for a decade at this point widespread in the west the army has been practicing it all over the world for decades the police in japan have been practicing it well over a hundred years by that point um, and it is the most practiced martial arts worldwide and most widespread so saying that 1993 is when we learned what works and what doesn't work and you know what's the best in my opinion makes absolutely zero sense and for BJJ's sake as well um, 1993 they've been doing their uh, Luta Livre uh, BJJ a feud for decades at this point Luta, the um, Valle Tudo matches same thing against the Capoeira matches uh, so saying 1993 is just scratching the surface this is just your introduction to history in my opinion kind of like knowing the saying that you're learning the judo and BJJ history from the JRE podcast it's just very basic and doesn't even begin to scratch the surface because you know I'm not saying this uh, as you know a way to poke f fun at someone or you know to attack someone but if there's no Kano again there's no BJJ there's no UFC there's nothing and it's still the most functional art especially if you want to start a fight from the standing position so again 1993 makes zero sense at least to me so uh, today I want to talk about how Jigoro Kano started Jiu Jitsu why he was he in so much pursuit of it and uh, when he met the American president so uh, Kano was a teenager when he when he was first introduced to jiu-jitsu um, there was a friend of the family called Uminari Nakai and he was one of the guards of the shogunate and um, one day when he was at the Kano residence Nakai did like a brief uh, presentation of jiu-jitsu and telling Kano that it is great as a physical activity and also great if you want to beat a bigger and stronger opponent you know the basic uh, advertisement for jujitsu and Kano was absolutely mesmerized and asked Nakai please teach me jujitsu but Nakai was very much dismissive almost laughing in his face and telling him that this is such an old practice nobody does this anymore um, it is just old school and just forget about it uh, I'm not gonna teach you there is just so many things that you can do instead but Kano was not convinced first of all he was very small and he was bullied all the time and he was weak uh, again he's uh, he met up with another uh, jiu-jitsu master by the name of uh, Ryuji Katajiri uh, same thing he was very dismissive nobody wanted to teach him because Jiu-Jitsu at that point has become a social pariah and nobody wanted to teach uh, Jiu-Jitsu at this point. So the more people would ignore Kano or be dismissive, the more he wanted to train Jiu-Jitsu. And it was because of this stubbornness that we have what is called Kodokan Judo. So finally, uh, he, went out, he went on to uh, go and study at the Tokyo Imperial University. And there, he they told him that if you want to find a jiu-jitsu master, it is uh, where the osteopath work. Osteopath is kind of like a chiropractor, but for the entire body in France. Till this day, it's still very big because of all the joint issues that we face. Uh, judokas go to osteopath, at least here in France, all the time. And a lot of them back then, they were jiu-jitsu masters. And this is where Kano would go in order to find a jiu-jitsu teacher. And there, this is where he found uh, Fukuda Hachinosuke. And Fukuda Hachinosuke, in my opinion, is a great character um, because First of all, he was a Tenjin Shinryu Jiu-Jitsu master and 
Second, he was the grandfather of Fukuda Keiko, the only female to reach 10th Dan in Judo, red belt. Um, is there a red belt in BJJ as a woman? I'm not entirely sure. BJJ guys, please let me know down below. So, uh, Fukuda has a great philosophy in terms of jujitsu. He first said you need to train technique and do a lot of randori in order to establish your technique. And after that, you would teach he would teach them traditional forms of kata so he had the right mindset approaching uh, jujitsu and gave it to kano and thus this is why judo till this day it is like this a lot of randori and then we would focus on kata as we go as we get older um so uh let's go to august 5th 1879 so there was a presentation or a demonstration that would be done in front of the United States of America uh, President Ulysses S. Grant and this demonstration took place at the place or the home of uh, a very famous businessman Shibusawa Eichi and um, it was Fukuda and uh, Iso Masatomo that the old men basically they would perform kata and Kano and Godai Ryusaku would perform randori in front of the United States president um, so the kata ended and then the randori happened it was a very long uh, randori that happened and the president of the US was just mesmerized after that he told the masters Fukuda and Iso that he was just absolutely sold and he wanted jujitsu in the US so Fukuda uh, by the way, Fukuda passed away just briefly after this particular demonstration, but he did something that, in my opinion, changed everything. He went up to Kano and said that the president absolutely loved jujitsu and what they were uh, presenting, that he wants jujitsu in America. And he said those famous words to him. He said that we, the older generation, have fought to keep jujitsu alive but it is up to you to spread it around the world. Um, and that, in my opinion, those, world, those words changed the martial arts forever. Uh, not only did jiu-jitsu survive, but it crossed all the way to the West. Um, this is, in my opinion, and this is 79. This is three years before the establishment of the Kodokan. So, in my opinion, Kano took these words to heart and made them a real reality so someone like recently uh, commented that why are judokas talking about samurais the um the philosophy of judo is very progressive and leaving behind um the tradition etc and they have basically no right to talk about samurais well i couldn't disagree more um the the argument itself or the claim is a very serious and it should be discussed um well first of all if there was no judo again there would be no gracie ufc but that's just on the side uh, this is just for entertainment and you know when it comes to functionality judo already has it but when it comes to tradition and taking the samurai serious seriously i would say judo did more than just preserve it but also glorify it in a sense because imagine if only aikido represented samurais today because like that's what they like to do they they wear the hakama uh, or that big black shorts for those of you who don't know and they wave their wooden swords and calling themselves samurais on social media but when in fact they don't even do randori so imagine if that's the only image you have of samurais first of all it would be a joke and second imagine if it's only those like old jujitsu schools demonstration that you see on youtube that's the only um image of jujitsu you have it would not only be a joke but it would have died decades ago the only reason that we go and see jujitsu demonstrations whether it is tension shinryu or uh, yoshin ryu whatever it may be it's because we know that judo came from those schools if not like i said it would have died a long time ago and another thing uh, when it comes to being progressive and traditional um i'm sure you've watched the last samurai where um the meiji emperor the emperor meiji at the end says that we have railroads we have steel we have uh, industries 
uh, we have Western clothing, but we must not forget who we are, something like I'm paraphrasing. But in a sense, the Japanese people really lived up to those words. They did not forget who they are. A lot of the traditions still exist, yet they are so progressive in industries, etc. Same with martial arts. Saying that it's progressive doesn't necessarily mean that they discard who they are. So again, if it wasn't for judo, your image of samurais and Japanese jujitsu and uh, and you know tradition would be skewed and almost ridiculed or barely non-existent. So again, uh, what Fukuda said to Kano was really uh, important and precious. And Kano not only lived up to those words, he left something incredibly great. Again, no disrespect to Gracie's talented fighters a lot of them will go down as legends but you know 93 is just scratching the surface historically and you know for both bjj and judo so uh if you have anything else to add please let me know down below also consider supporting me on patreon i have exclusive content for the patrons only and please uh check out kosen judo 01 on instagram they post a lot about um, judo history with resources of the books a lot of the time i get my um uh, ideas for videos from them so this is a great account i give them tons of credits so and also don't forget to check out uh, josh simon's shop for uh, historical articles and t-shirts this was shady and as always Thank you for listening.